Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to be taking a look at some fairly significant performance improvements in Yuzu, this Nintendo Switch emulator. So first of all, we're going to be taking a look at Super Mario Odyssey, one of the most playable games on this Switch emulator at this point in time, at least from a AAA game perspective. So since at this point in time, we still do not have any kind of shader caches or at least disc based shader caches in Yuzu emulator, we are still going to get these little small hitches and pauses which are indicative of this shader cache compilation. Regardless of that, when you look at our performance numbers, once our shaders are compiled, you can see that our performance has gone up anywhere between 25 and 35% in the last two canary builds themselves. These performance enhancing canary builds will be available down in the description of this video. You simply have to go over onto the Yuzu website and you will find them there easily. As I said, they'll be linked down below. So in this area in previous videos of mine, you would have seen that performance wise I was sitting in and around probably 28 to 35 frames per second, whereas now we are almost hitting the cap of 60 frames per second very, very often indeed. We are going to get small stutters like for example if I break one of these boxes for the first time our game is going to pause and freeze but any times after that we are going to have very good performance. You can also see that while the developers are working on this weird fish eye or lensing effect as we've come to know it, it still has not been fixed at this point in time. So even though we have a much greater performance, performance is not the only thing that has been changed in this latest Canary build. We have also seen some fairly substantial improvements to the rendering in several kingdoms. One of the most substantial is Cascade Kingdom and the rendering of the fog, waterfalls and the water. Moving over to some gameplay footage in this exact kingdom, you are going to see exactly what I am talking about. All we need to do now is to wait for the Odyssey to land, us to exit and I'm going to be able to show you exactly what has been changed. So performance wise, upon loading into this kingdom, you're pretty much going to see that it is still in and among some of the worst performing kingdoms in the game right now. However, when we look out towards all of these waterfalls, the fog and the water, you can see that it has been absolutely massively improved in its rendering quality. Funnily enough, it is actually one of the developers of Dolphin Emulator, Tino, who implemented these blending changes which has given us these rendering improvements, so it's really really cool to see developers from other emulators coming over to help out with Yuzu. For anybody who hasn't been a part of the Yuzu Discord community, you would also not be aware of the fact that Exap, one of the lead developers of Simu, the Wii U emulator, has also helped with the development of Yuzu emulator itself, especially so in regards to how the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild renders and exactly how it works on Simu, so that they can potentially translate some of those features over to Yuzu. So while we're still here in Cascade Kingdom, let's take a look at something that's very, very obviously missing from this level. You can see that once we get to this bridge area, while the water effects do actually splash on our gameplay screen, the waterfall itself is not currently being rendered. Hopefully this is something that will be fixed very, very soon on this emulator. While we're still in this area, we can take a look at yet another rendering fix in this game on Yuzu. They have completely fixed the bugged out graphics and the weird actual rendering of the transitional scene between when you go into a painting and when you load into another completely separate kingdom. So to show off this increase in rendering, we're simply going to come to this painting where we're going to be heading over to Bowser's Kingdom. Let's just approach the painting, press A to enter and once we enter it, as with pretty much every single new area that you load into, you're going to get a tiny bit of initial shader stutter, but then your performance is going to jump straight back up. So there we go, we have our shader stutter, but you can see once we get past this stutter, performance is now awesome in this scene, and it is now also correctly being rendered. Previously, when you went into most of the paintings in any of Super Mario Odyssey, your graphics would be broken regardless of whether you went into a kingdom or if you were loading back out of it. You should see that when we arrive in Bowser's Kingdom, once we get past this loading screen, that yes, while we're, as before, going to get this shader stutter as soon as we load into the level, once everything steadies out, you can see just how well this world is now rendering and also performing. 
This area, Bowser's Kingdom, was previously a very, very demanding kingdom, but as you can see right now, we are getting absolutely awesome performance. Not exactly awesome performance while we're caching our shaders, but as you see, when we get through our shader caching, it is absolutely amazing performance. Previously in this kingdom, we would be at around 35 to 38 frames per second, and right now, we are almost hitting the frame cap in this game of 60. So to show that the graphics are fixed when travelling both ways, we're going to head back into the painting, head back to Cascade Kingdom, and once we arrive there, we should indeed see that it is basically perfect graphically once again, apart from, as I previously showed off, the non-rendering waterfall. So let's just wait to actually load through this, and there you go, you can see we're back in Cascade Kingdom, we're just about to come out of the painting, and performance and render quality is going to be awesome in this area once again. Once I actually get my camera turned and get a good look at the area, you should see that it is absolutely perfectly being rendered as it was before, and hopefully once they can fix this weird fisheye bug and also fix the rendering of the waterfall in this area, it is almost going to be 100% perfectly rendered. So our next testing area is going to be one we've seen many times before, we're going to be taking a look at Sand Kingdom. So as many of you would have seen in my previous video, we were basically being capped to around 60 or 61 frames per second in Cap Kingdom. Despite the shader cache building, we are basically getting around 30 to 35% more frames in this area. I have personally tested this on both my system containing an 8700K and a 980Ti, and I have also tested it on my much more mid-range 3770K and GTX 680 machine. On both of these computers, I am seeing the exact same kind of performance differences, in percentages at least. On my 3770K system, I generally get around 45 FPS in this exact area I'm in right now, whereas as you can see on my more high-end system, I'm getting in and around 60 to 70 and sometimes even around 80 or 85 frames. One of the best places to get an overall picture of performance in this kingdom at least is atop the inverted pyramid, so let's head there right now, and in doing so we can see another optimization. whereas before we were getting massive frame rate drops down to around 15 frames per second when interacting with any of these electrical points and heading along these wires, we are now getting absolutely smooth frame rates. So in order to see our overall frame rate in this area, let's just look down into this very, very demanding area where you can see we're getting in and around 50 to 55 and sometimes 60 frames per second. On my lower end machine, as I said, containing the 3770K in this exact same area, I generally get around 35 to 40 frames per second. Obviously, it's not perfect, but for a machine of its age, it is still very, very good performance. Another area that's very, very good for testing performance optimizations are these sub areas, for example, this one right here in Sand Kingdom. Now, previous to the last two canary builds, I would get very good performance in these areas, generally around 60 or 70 frames per second, whereas right now you can see I'm getting anywhere from around 90 to 110. I think I speak for the entire community when I say that if there was any kind of possibility of getting a dynamic FPS patch similar to what we have on Simu Emulator and Breath of the Wild for this game, it would be super awesome as it would actually enable us to play at these higher frame rates but maintain 1x or 100% speed. This would also be very advantageous for anybody who had a lower end system and was only able to maintain around 30 or 40 frames per second, but with the use of a dynamic patch for this game at least, they might be able to play at one time or 100% speed. The final kingdom we're going to be taking a look at in this video is one that was previously unplayable due to terrible performance, and as you can see on the cauldron above the volcano has also seen a graphical improvement. This right here is Luncheon Kingdom and is in and of itself one of my favourite kingdoms, at least graphically in Super Mario Odyssey. Previously, this kingdom was completely unplayable, mostly due to the fact that every single time you loaded into it, you would be hit straight in the face with absolutely a terrible performance of around 20 to 30 frames per second. Obviously, I know 30 frames per second at this early point in this emulator's development isn't very bad performance at all, but when you consider that pretty much every other kingdom is running at anywhere between 30 and 40 frames per second, this kingdom was definitely the outlier. However, at least on my higher end system, and to a degree on my other low end system, performance is no longer as big of an issue in this kingdom right now. 
you can see on screen that we are getting anywhere from around 42 to 60 frames per second in this kingdom. Very, very good performance indeed, and an absolutely enormous performance boost over anything we were seeing about four days ago. In this area, there still are some graphical bugs. For example, you can see there is some kind of weird effect happening on the top of the water, and there is also this weird kind of pixelated effect that happens on, I'm not sure if they're sugar stacks or if they're salt stacks, but you can see the effect I am talking about to the right of my screen right now. So, at least in relation to Super Mario Odyssey on this emulator, when we discount performance improvements, there really are less bugs to fix in this game right now than there are bugs that have already been fixed. This really is a credit to all of the people who are putting in massive amounts of hard work daily in order to give us the best possible experience in this experimental emulator. If you want to show your appreciation and help with the development of this Switch emulator, you can find a link to their Patreon down in the description of this video. So as many of you will be aware, Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu and Eevee are going to be releasing this Friday the 16th of November, so it is going to be a very busy day in the world of Yuzu and Nintendo Switch emulation in and of itself. Keep your eyes peeled on the channel for any news in relation to the bootability and playability of that game. Once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.